Hey, 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 it's Friday, June 16th, 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, right here on the West Coast. I am Brandon Beliso. This is Success Never Sleeps, where we as a collective, we gather and we just try to figure out this thing called life. And when people try to tell me that it's not personal, it's business. For many small business owners, your business is very personal. So the personal development aspect, the mindset aspect that goes along with writing good SOPs, job descriptions, position agreements, you know, your org chart, establishing the culture, your branding, all of that needs to go hand in hand. Because I know for me on the worst of days, I still love what I do because what I do is very personal to me. And mine is simple. Live your best life. So we want to start by thanking our sponsors. I got one sitting right here. Good friend of mine, as well as somebody I would consider a mentor. I learned a lot from Stephen about digital media. You know, I learned a lot about integrity. As Stephen's sharing, you've been around eight years now? Seven years. Seven years. Seven years. Market Muscles just celebrated seven years. And the growth they've experienced in seven years has been very methodical, very strategic, but more importantly, rooted in really good values. And, and um, Stephen will vouch for this. I was referring people to him, to websites before um, I even knew him and I kind of tripped him out, but we'll get into that in a minute. <laughs> so while you guys come aboard, say hi, put it into the comments, let us know that you're here. We appreciate that very much. Um, let's start by thanking everybody. Tusa, we also know them as Vision, Martial Arts Supplies. They supply all the equipment to the Olympians in Taekwondo. They're now branching out into martial arts and BJJ, and I'm very blessed to have a partnership with them. So if you need anything, you know, feel free to reach out. I told them like, like an Italian gangster, I'll vouch for you and I'll make sure they take good care of you. Of course, Market Muscles, simply the best. You know, when I finally got my own Market Muscles website, we did 115 new students, not trials, new students in our first month. And that was really powerful. And you know me, I'm a Elon Musk do-it-yourself guy, right? Tesla's never done any advertising and we just started to do digital media. But again, I need to be involved. No different than Elon Musk went and slept on the floor at Twitter and told everybody to join him so they could figure this thing out, right? Everyone was laughing at him as he lost $220 billion last year. And he's gained, what, 215 of it back this year. He's a really smart guy. But he was willing to go into Twitter, sleep on the floor, to really be at the pulse. And now he's ready to know what type of CEO to put in there. I think it's smart. And I think we can't be afraid as people, in, even in our own personal lives, sometimes you gotta take two steps back to take three steps forward, right? And that's not a bad thing. Great generational businesses know when to contract and know when to expand. And you know, I've been very verbal about that too, sharing that in the pandemic, 2019, I took home $700,000. In 2020, I took home 160. I talk about contracting, but over 700,000 in PP money. I had other virtual revenue streams, which is, did 1.2 million. So it balanced it out, but I know <coughs> from being in this game so long, great businesses know when to contract, they know when to expand. Cool? So if you don't have a Market Muscles website, it's probably because you're out of the five mile radius or, or the demographic number of people. And I was praising Stephen about that just a minute ago because it's that type of value. And we all know that rule, right? If you have a Market Muscles website, nobody within five miles or a certain population can get a Market Muscles website. I think it's badass. I think it's integrity driven. I think it's a really strong core value and one that I admire greatly. What's up, Conrad? Hey, Bob, how's it going? As you come in, you know, do say hello. I love it when people tune in live. I know everyone watches the YouTube and they watch it on the podcast later after the fact, but being here allows you to answer those real questions in real time, which may serve you. My studio, of course, you know, the CRM, I love too. You know, everybody that I'm blessed to work with, as you see here, you know, I love these people because I don't want to wake up every day and spend life with people I don't like. I don't care how much money you give me or pay me. You know, it does not matter to me. And, and two in the gang there, I love everybody out there as well. Kids love life skills. You know, we got Marco and Amy and Letitia and Ben and Chris holding down the fort there. If you don't have a life skills system in your martial arts school, I think it's a huge miss. Now, I know there's been people running around saying, if you teach life skills, you suck as a martial artist. I beg to differ. I really beg to differ because I know, you know, in my day, I'm getting older, that I could stand toe to toe with anyone. We fought in the streets and gangs. We carried guns. So don't talk to me that life skills suck and you're a crappy martial artist if you teach life skills. 
It is something that separates us from soccer, baseball, gymnastics, dance. And if you can really integrate it hand in hand with quality martial arts, you create this premium product that nobody can touch. So please don't listen to that type of white noise. And I, I saw the video the other day where they're saying, if you teach life skills, you suck. That's crazy. Hmm. Yeah, it just blew my mind, Stephen. And then, of course, Elsie Accounting. Stephen will vouch for my sister. I will vouch for my sister. She's tough as nails, you know, but she keeps me in line. I'm a dreamer. There's no amount of money I won't spend on what I want to do. We were just discussing the remodel here. We only put the mats here, and we only remodeled the weight area in SF when I wanted to do the whole thing last September. But she said no, and I listened to that. So you need to have good people on your team and never think that you do it alone. If you're doing it all, all alone, you're probably not running a really good business. Cool. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And what's coming up? It's Time Life Balance, November 11th through 14th. You notice we did move the date. We moved the date uh, for good reasons. We have Jason coming out to do his black belt testing. My sister Letitia's testing for black belt. That's exciting. Yeah, so that's going to be pretty cool. And then, of course, Dave Kovar is coming in to do an instructor boot camp, which is going to be cool. Sam is here for the four-day experience. And a new kid on the block who does digital media, uh, Adam Lowy, who I get to work with personally as we're crafting their brand. So get signed up. Uh, the link's somewhere there. Marco will post it in the comments. Uh, we're limited to 20 people for the four-day experience. And then, of course, the two-day or one-day, there's a little more room for that. But get signed up now. It's your best investment is you. And you want to make sure that you're ready for 2024 because success is something we plan for. It's not something you just wake up to every day and you're successful. It's the methodical work, right? That happens to it. So I want to welcome my good friend and I'm going to tell you, but I love this man. I think Steven Reinstein is, is one of the most ethical people, kind hearted, good soul. And as I share, and we'll start with that. When I was referring people to you at Market Muscles, what, 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 did, that, what did that mean to you, Steven? Yeah. I didn't even know Steven yet. I, I'm curious if you even remember this. So our first conversation, uh, there was a Facebook post that was talking about the idea of templated websites, right? Mm -hmm. And at this point, you were very against it, right? I was. Because you, you had your own person yep. uh, that was doing it. And I think that your uh, understanding of templated websites came from experience with previous companies that you worked with yes sir and then it not actually translating your culture and your brand uh onto the screen well because they wanted to use stock photos right i remember they, they, uh, right they, i mean but they held you like nazis and I, I know that may be not be the best choice of words but you couldn't update a photo right you couldn't change the copy yep. you couldn't even brand it right you're yep. stuck with whatever they told you and then it was like a 48 hour turnaround sometimes just to change the date or right. fix a broken link Right? And I think your your website that you had tested out with one of those companies that had the Golden Gate Bridge on it. At the Golden Gate Bridge at the back one, I was <laughs> arguing with them. I said, the Golden Gate Bridge has nothing to do with my martial arts school. Right. And they kept insisting it tested well. We are the experts. Right. And I think that very dismissive, you're a dumb you know, school owner and we're the expert, did not lay, way, lay well with me. Yeah. Because I love education. So I... I, I saw your commenting about those things and I knew that our approach was different. So I asked to get on a call with you mm -hmm. and this is, we, we had never talked at all before and we got on a call and I just was explaining why we were different and you were explaining from your perspective, why you thought it wasn't a good approach. And it was a good conversation. I think that, you know, I explained my side, you explained your side. And, and that was actually a really meaningful conversation because I got to learn from your perspective, you know, what, didn't go well working with a company like that. And that conversation helped us with our approach. That way we didn't do the same thing. And, and that's why now I'm with market muscle. <laughs> um, do you remember that conversation? Or I no? do. Yeah. I mean, we've okay. had many conversations. Yes, yes, yes. Some very late night. And, <laughs> and, and I always enjoy the ones where you come across and we're talking because I like new thinking. And I think what we're sharing here, that that it is one of the, albatrosses or Achilles heel of our industry is you spend too much time ar arguing mm -hmm. my Shotokan is better than your Kung Fu. Right. Whereas free thinkers, new thinkers will go, oh, cool. I'm glad you think the way you do. And I can think the way I do. Well, what it does for me, which eventually led me to becoming a uh, market muscles tribe, I'm going to say more than a client, mm -hmm. more than a customer. See, I didn't buy in to market muscles. I believe in market muscles. And there's a huge difference there. 
because when they do things like overhaul the whole website and you're standing in line waiting for version three yeah. and you have to trust that process. Remember, this is technology, folks. And it's you got to get it out there to test it. And it, there's updates. How many updates do we get on our phones every week? Right, right. Right. And so if you're akin to that and you believe, then you're going to ride an incredible wave with market muscles. And I'm not saying that to pump up Stephen. I'm just saying it because it's truth with any technology. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah and I think, you know, that that conversation really kicked things off for us because I think it really you know, like you said, show how we're both open thinkers. We're able to mm -hmm. have conversations. We're able to challenge each other in a non-combative way just to, you know, see where things can go. And and that really, you know, set the tone for our relationship. And I think I, I, I appreciate that most is that we can be so honest with each other and yeah. our, our thoughts on things. Without getting our panties in a wall. Right. Right. Yeah. But see, because we, we value the relationship and I try to share that. And I think that's what's very unique now about a market muscles website for me it's not simply a sales driven website get the lead get the lead get right. the lead it really organically tells stories yeah. because we know in in controlling the narrative mm. and it's important to control your narrative i thought that was very amazing how apple just released the new v vr set yeah and they didn't speak about metaverse once yeah. and they didn't speak about ai at all mm -hmm. which are components of that sure yeah. right so they control the narrative and apple's Apple is master of that. And maybe that's the, they're why they're one of the only tech companies that have survived this recent downfall in the stock market. And yeah. they didn't lose as much money as Meta or anybody else. The value of their stock today, Apple's at an all time high. Right. Where Meta's still climbing out of the hole, Google's climbing out of the hole, Microsoft, NVIDIA's at an all time high, but that's a smaller company. So, yeah. And, 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 and so, talk to me about today. You know, you've been in this game for seven years, you've seen the evolution of websites, you know, not, what do you think school owners need to get that would really help them? Because the bottom line is you need to move that needle, right? Or you're out of this pandemic. Some people are still struggling tremendously. You know, they're not growing. They're trying to find the solution, you know, for their businesses. What do you think from, from the tech side of it all? Starting with websites. Yeah, yeah. It, it's really interesting. Um, just because, like, I, I've been giving this sort of talk or this sort of conversation every single year, right? Because everyone wants to know, okay, it's mm -hmm. 2021. What do we do now? Now it's 2022. What do we do now? Um, and and even though there's new things that come out, there's the chat GPTs and the AI and the mid-journey image creation and all these kind of like cool things, they're great tools, but it doesn't change the basics that we should be doing at all times, right? And And I feel like just like in our martial arts, people forget to do those things. And without good basics, with a, without a good foundation, all the other things don't really matter. All the new bells and whistles and the cool things that we can take advantage of. So when I talk about the basics for websites, it's the consistent blogging, right? You talk about that all the time with I the do. martial arts blog. Yeah, I do. I have the number one blog. If you look martial arts blog right now at Google, after the paid ones, I'm number one. And I don't use key search words. Yeah. I don't use any of that stuff. But don't you agree? Don't the algorithms see that this is original content? Right. He's consistent. Yep. And then they can go down the rabbit hole and see TED Talk, podcast, da, 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 da. Yeah. And they can see that. And there's no deep fake. You pull up a photo of mine standing at Meta speaking or at Kuki One in Korea. That's not a deep fake photo. Right. Right. It's straight up. Everyone knows what deep fake is, right? It's fabricated. Yeah. Um, and so I think all of that, you're right consistency yeah. you got that consistently post your photos at google consistently do posts at your google business page yep. keep your social media consistent in your messaging and that's why the brand is important yeah absolutely um and like speaking about these new tools the chat gpts the you know different ai writers uh i think i saw you comment about utilizing that to create content mm -hmm. and how that's not a great thing right nope. because it's not organic it's nope. not coming from you no but i will use it for spell check yeah i will use it for research yeah like the other day i'm, I'm working with a business and i said hey da 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 and chat gpt gave me all this information yep. so i love it for research yeah a lot i use it for a couple different things i like to use it for organizing meeting notes so i'll know going into a meeting i want to cover these topics right so i'll put it into chat gpt and i'll say hey write me an outline with these things in it. So that way I have something to cover uh, in my meeting and it'll spit it out in a nice uh, formatted version for me. So it's it's a tool to enhance the things that you're doing. It's not the thing that should be doing it for you Thank entirely, you. right? Yeah, because I love it. See, and that's the, you know, we speak in the martial arts about this yin yang balance, Yeah. right? And I think every school should be using a CRM system. Sure. Right? Yeah. 
Everything we do is through an app. I bought my Tesla purely through an app. Yeah, yeah. And that was an amazing experience. I can't believe how I was the consumer. I took the reins. Yeah. I was empowered. Yep. And so we can leverage it that way, folks. But hear what Stephen's saying. I think what a lot of martial artists don't get because they're a technician who's having an entrepreneurial seizure, as Emith would say, Michael Gerber, is you need to really become a well-rounded business owner. Yeah. And if you're not singing your song, you're not talking about your message, and you're simply going to let ChatGPT create your message, That's, I think it's going to be very short-lived. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, AI in general, you know, there's a lot of people that are concerned about the, the takeover of AI or how it's going to be replacing you know, their job or something like that. But I, I look at tools like ChatGPT as that, a tool. And if you're not good at using it as a tool, that's when you might get replaced at someone that's able to leverage it well as a tool. Well, but it itself, I don't think is going to replace people. It, in our arena of technology and what we do, you know, creating content, you're right, there's always going to be new original content, but I, I see the genuine fear. Mm. Think about the autonomous car. Sure. Right? They're talking about they could replace 200,000 truck drivers, mm. right? Because that thing's on a freeway driving all night long, very limited traffic. Yeah. So the odds of an accident are slim to none. We're not talking about downtown Manhattan. Yeah. So that is a genuine concern. I think so right? as well. Uh, I do also think it presents opportunity for uh, more personalized services, which I think people value more now than ever because yes. of, you know, the way that things are going, right? When you go into a, a restaurant or something and you're presented with a kiosk to, to order something, great, it's convenient and it's nice sometimes to do that. But then when you get an actual great server or someone that's excited to be there with you and, and, and talk with you, that's a different experience, right? And I feel like people are almost willing to pay more for that personalized experience at this point because they're just given this kind of like automatic thing. I agree with you. And we made that pivot. You know, we reduced our day camps from 50, 60 campers yeah. down to 36. Yep. So one scarcity right right away. It's a small, safe, well-staffed or words. I just updated on my market muscles website. Yep. I went in there and, you know, safe, small, safe, and well-staffed. That's been kind of our buzz thing in our social media, what we've done. And we're charging more than anybody else for a camp. Yeah. Right. So I think we can do that. Same thing with the martial arts. We're at all time high prices. Yeah. Right. And we automatically raise them every year. There's no discussion. There's no sale on it. It just automatically happens. So I agree with you. I think that's going to happen more and more because people in that position that were devalued before are being replaced like Shake Shack, kiosk, things like that. They're still going to need that. People need human connection. And we've witnessed that. Why do you think they brought back the old CEO from Disney? First thing he said, everybody's coming back to work. No more remote. Yeah. How many tech companies are now have enough data post pandemic and pre pandemic to say the productivity working at home is not cutting it. Right. It's not, I know there's a big revolt. People don't want to come back to work because they stupidly sold their home and moved out to Idaho and they're working remotely. I would have never done that by the way. And the unpredictability of where we are, I wouldn't have sold my home here and moved to freaking Idaho to work remotely yeah. or living in Costa Rica. So I get why they're upset, but this, this is a hell of a lot better than you sitting in, you know, Virginia doing right. this. Yeah. Right. You can't so recreate that. Yeah. You can't. And that's where I think, you know, you guys want to be extremely mindful of that. It's not a kiosk. It's not transactional. See, I think what Stephen's saying is the humanism of investing in a relationship, it is not transactional. But if you keep promoting your business as a transaction, two classes in uniform for 1999, that's a transaction. There's no storytelling right, there. Right. There's nothing that makes me curious to want to explore yeah. the potential of a relationship. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. So what else do you think, sir? Yeah, so we've got the blogging, like you were talking about, updating your Google profile, staying consistent with that. I see a lot of people let that go. Uh, and I see this a lot, especially with uh, getting new reviews for your business. People go through seasons with that, right? Mm -hmm. They get really into it. Oh, I want to get a lot of reviews, a lot of reviews. And then they'll fall off for six months. And then they're like, wait, I need more reviews. So then they do it again, get a lot of reviews, and then they fall off for six months. But that needs to be a consistent uh, piece that they're working on. So how would you do that? Uh, you got to build it into your processes, mm -hmm. right? Anytime that you're having an event that uh, people are excited, whether that's belt testing, uh, whether that's camps or uh, stripe testing or anything, that's a great opportunity to ask someone for a review because they're feeling the high. They're feeling great about uh, your business. Um, you know, having this sort of information available 
uh, throughout your school. I think you have a sign in your bathroom, right? On yep. the, on the back and you yep. can use that for advertising events, but you can also use it for prompting people to, to leave a review, uh, for your business. So I think just, just constantly putting it out there for them to do that is, is really important. Um, and just having it as part of your processes as well. Yeah. So again, like our martial arts training, we need to be consistent yep. and you're right. Pe people get that, you know, thing and then they do it for three months and please don't do it from, from your school. You know what I saw, and you, you can help me with this, Stephen. Yep. If it's picking up the IP address from here, yeah, aren't the algorithms going to frown on that? Yeah, definitely. It, it does see that because they want reviews to be organic. They don't want people to be enticed to do it. It's actually against their terms of service if you're doing like a contest, right? Where it's like uh, leave a review and you're entered to win this prize or something like that, which I see a lot of businesses do. Um, I did it once. I did it <laughs> once back, way, way back when. <laughs> Way right. back when and trying to discover, you know, how to generate that. But you're right. Yeah. That organic, native, you know, I think we would both agree that trust is the last true form of marketing. Yeah, absolutely. And we talk about deep fake, fake news, myth, misinformation. I don't know. I think the number is pretty high, like 90%, 95% think everything on the Internet is fake. It's some really high number. Yeah, yeah. It's a really high number. So how can we position ourselves? You talked about the blog. What about the gallery? Yeah, I mean... I always tell people that investing in good media assets, photography, um, video is even more important than investing in a good website because those assets that you're going to have, you can use for so long. I was, well, we were waiting outside here before you came in, we were looking at the ads uh, on, on your front window mm -hmm. and I was showing uh, Cindy, the, the, you have your kids in the ads, yep. right? Uh, but this was like maybe eight years ago, yep. I think. And the photos still look great. They convey the message that you want. And this is something that you did eight years ago and you're still able to use those yep. assets, um, you know, to, to help advertise your business. So, and, and smart business, I'm able to pay each of my kids $12,500 yes. a year for that. Yep. And I write them off on my taxes. Yeah. So <laughs> it's a win-win, but you're right. I think it's like a great hit song. Yeah. Right. Bob Marley's Three Little Birds is as great today as it was back in 68 when, when he first sang it yeah. and wrote it. So it's the same thing here. Great pictures stand the test of time. So to not invest in that money and get a great photographer, you know, sure, there's everything with our iPhones and we can get a shot. But when you strategically create a shot sheet and you base it upon a clear vision of what you want to convey, that photo will speak a thousand words. We're still using photos from eight years ago yeah. in, in our digital marketing Yep. because you know, it's good stuff. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, if you guys go to onemartialarts.com and you look at that website, there's no question about your brand, mm -hmm. about the people that are in those photos. That is a one martial arts website, right? Yeah. There's there's no question about that. And no one can can recreate that. Even if they're using the same exact template in terms of structure and, and that sort of thing, there's no one's gonna come close to it because it's it's your kids, it's your mm -hmm. brand, it's your colors, it's your school. And that's the type of things that people are not able to copy. So the yin to the yang of that, if on, on the outside, you know, we're creatively doing great photos. We know our brand. Yep. You know, we have clear brand colors. Only three, please. Three strong brand colors. We have a purpose statement. We have core values. You know, we're great at storytelling. How do we marry that with market muscles? What do you do that the average market muscle user does not see on the back end that influences Google and everybody else. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's actually really interesting because I look at the stats of our, our, our top performers and one martial arts is always at the top in terms of how many leads you guys are generating per month, how much traffic is coming to your website, what the percentage of that traffic is converting into prospects mm -hmm. that come through your website. Um, and you guys are always at the top and it's because of a multitude of different reasons. Uh, but everything that we just mentioned is, really a big part of that but structurally from a tech side yes you know that nobody would even phantom right because i'm sure google doesn't look favorably on crappy made websites sure right that are using backlinks and all this other stuff to try to yeah. position themselves yeah there's a lot of things that we focus on big one is site speed right because well, what does that mean uh how fast your website loads when somebody comes to it so do you recommend no videos is that why we don't see videos pop up instantly m on mobile yeah that's that's exactly why we don't do it on mobile so mm -hmm. on a desktop uh most likely someone is connected to wi-fi or they're connected to a uh, ethernet cable mm -hmm. so they're able to load those videos quickly on a mobile device you know who knows where they are they're, they're probably connected to some sort of satellite or, or something like that um, and they're not able to download, download those videos quickly. 
which means they're not able to load your website quickly. So, so what do you recommend? I know that used to be, you know, that used to be a tactic above the fold. Yeah. Right. But I think that's passe now, correct? Yes. Yeah. People will scroll down and see everything. So even with that said, when you open up a website, what image would just make them want to scroll? Yeah. Especially if I have multiple programs. I think the biggest thing is the text, the text first over the image. Yep. All right. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> Does it, you know, yeah. And, and you need a, a very uh, catchy initial headline that people are going to gravitate towards and want to explore more. If it's simply martial arts in town name, everybody can put that, right? Yeah. That's, yeah. that's not going to See, that used someone. to be a tactic, right? Sure. Because when people search, yeah. that's where a lot of martial arts schools will call themselves, in our case, Millbrain Martial Arts. Yeah. But I, I was working with a client in Santa Rita, and the biggest thing in Santa Rita is a prison. Yeah. I said, I don't know if I'd want to associate my brand with a prison and call my place <laughs> Santa Rita Martial Arts. Sure. So that's passe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, definitely. So having a strong headline. So, um, so ours is live your best life, right? right? That is our, that's our purpose statement. It's up here on the wall Yep. In, in our purpose statement. Everything we do is about myself, my team, my family. It's all about helping people live their version yep. of their best life. Yep. So is that okay? Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Having some sort of mission statement in there. Uh, basically, you're trying to entice people and show them how you're going to enhance their life, how the grass is greener by coming to your business. So it's not purely an emotional connection. I mean, you know, you're going to die tomorrow if you don't sign up for kickboxing. Right, right, right. right. Or your child will be, you know, overweight and obese by the time they're 18 if they don't do martial arts. Right. Because I know fear sells. I don't particularly care for it, as you can hear the sour chasm in my voice. Right. So how do, how do they get to that point, though, where they can trust that? Instead of just putting, we teach focus and discipline. Right? Yeah, I think it's it's really going through that hard process of defining mm -hmm. your values and understanding your business and what makes you unique and coming up with that mission statement and and just going through that process, which isn't glamorous. Yeah, but I, I tell you, it's driven our business through a recession. It's driven our business through a pandemic, nine eleven, dot com yeah. bust. You know the housing market thing. You know back in two thousand eighteen, and and I know people don't spend in our industry, especially. Yeah. We don't spend it. it. It it does for a lot of part. It centers around the ego of a single person. Right. Yeah. I think one of my favorite things about really putting that together, the values, the mission statement is hiring. So we, we've we been hiring a lot at Market Muscles lately and going through that process of, you know, we get tons of resumes. There's been a lot of tech layoffs lately. So we have a lot of people that are applying mm -hmm. and we go through resumes, we do interviews. And because we know our values so well, we can tell almost immediately based on the person, whether they're going to be a good fit or not, right? Because all the other stuff, the technical aspect, great. We can teach a lot of that. It's really not that important to us. It's really the cultural fit that we're looking for the most, right? Because we're spending eight hours per day, you know, more than we spend with our family or our significant others with these people. So it's incredibly important that they're a good fit with the entire team. Um, and because we have such a strong, uh, you know, value system, it's really easy to see who's going to be a good fit and who's not very quickly, which helps tremendously with that process. And it would help our industry and our martial arts schools yeah. so much more. I mean, the average tenure for us now is 13 to 15 years now Yeah, on average. And I love my team. Yeah. I mean, I would do anything to take good care of them. Yeah, And I think that's important. We had that discussion too. Most guys are teaching for free and their teacher makes them feel like they're lucky to be teaching for free yeah. and they're making them pay for it through a master program and it's an upgrade. It's something that I'm, I'm a huge advocate um, to speak out against yeah. that needs to continue. So again, great companies like Apple think different. Nike, just do it. You know, Disney, I took a Disney business seminar, which, which I enjoy a lot mm. and they speak like Walt Disney's alive. Yeah. Well, you know what Walt says and Walt would do this. And I'm like, <laughs> does anyone realize this guy's been dead since the sixties? But that's the power of culture. Yeah. The careful thing, you know, in our, in anyone's business is the first four letters of culture is cult. Yeah. And it's a very thin line, just like the difference between ego and self-confidence. It's a very thin line. Yeah. And I think as leaders and as visionaries, we need to have real discipline and that's where the core values come in yeah so it's never about my ego we have a set of core values that we function within and you're right when we hire someone if they don't fit those values the interview yeah. is over same thing with uh even our, our clients right if we have clients that make our employees feel a certain way or go against the values or anything like that 
we get rid of those clients as well, right? Because we have to protect our people and we need to make sure that we're honoring the values that we have set. So there has been, you know, occasions where we have to fire clients and, you know, same thing goes with martial arts school owners. If you have a certain student that is- Or making, parent. Or parent. Or yeah. parent. That's toxic. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or, or making you guys question your values or making you guys steer away from your values. It's not worth the money. You know, it's just really not worth the money. Well, and that's why I think as, as level five leaders yeah. that they talk about in good to great, that you can't live by the customers always right. Right. And then lambast your team right away and point fingers at them when something goes wrong. It is, you know, I think Richard Branson said that really well, Virgin Airlines, if I take care of my team, they will take care of the clients. Yeah, they will. But you're, there, sometimes that happens. They come aboard. They're not a good fit as a as a team member or as a student. Yeah. As a student, you have to be willing to live by that set of core values that you speak of and be willing to fire them. Right. And, and, and you know, as a business owner, you never want to walk away from money like that. But that's the right decision because you know that you're if you don't, you're stepping over a quarter to pick up a penny. Right. Yeah. If, if you're doing that. So, um, because I've watched my team elevate when we've gotten rid of a toxic employee. Yeah. Right. I've watched my culture just in the waiting area of parents tighten up. Yeah. When we got rid of that parent that barks at his kid right. every class, you know, and it's stressful yeah. and it's uncomfortable for the team. It's uncomfortable for everybody sitting there. Absolutely. Yeah. You never Absolutely. want an employee or a customer to dread coming, right? Because of any reason. So, yeah. Yeah. Gotta get rid of that as soon as possible. But yes, clear, clear values, clear mission statement, uh, and if you can convey that in the headline of your website, you're going to really lure people in. And directly underneath, you need some sort of call to action because the way that most humans respond is if they are told to do something, yeah. they do it right. You do it multiple ways. You know, we use the chat, which is on down in the corner too, and you'd be amazed how many because that goes right into your messenger at Facebook. Yeah, you'd be amazed how many we're getting that in a steady stream too. So we're getting them there. We're getting them in the opt in. You know, we're getting them over at Google. So there's multiple ways because you don't want to market one way to 70 people. You want to market 70 ways. I think we're doing all of those things, but you're right. I mean, strategically putting that right there, giving them the ability to opt in. Yeah. Now we've gone a step further. And when I work with new clients, I don't advise this. You know, on each of our landing pages, you can physically look at the schedule for each location. You can physically look at our tuition rates and everything. Everything's transparent. We can do that, yeah. right? We're on a pace to do 2.1 million this year, yep. which is even better than pre-pandemic. I do not recommend that for a brand new school owner. Yeah. Just like I don't recommend a new school owner, don't use contracts. Right. They don't know you. Right. You just open shop and you want a 12-month contract. I don't believe in that. Yeah, I don't use it anyways in my businesses, but so be mindful of that. So again, what Steven's saying, you can copy my website. You are not going to get the same results yeah, absolutely. because we're, we rank number one. We're in a different position. Like when we got that really good month, that's the first thing you said, Hey man, they got 150 students. It's not just because of market muscles. Yeah. 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 So it's... take that for a minute. Yep. Right. And say, what are the three or four key things you can see that we do that every school owner can do a little bit better? Uh, you know, like you're talking about, it's really the, the outside aspects that influence how well your website performs. So your community involvement, right? Tonight you, we have a self-defense workshop here. Yeah. Tomorrow after four classes, we'll have a dad and me party. Yep. Right. A couple of weeks back at graduation, we donated the cotton candy machine outdoors so people can enjoy that for free. Yeah. Yeah. I think limiting ourselves to a demo team or just demonstrating martial arts is very limited. Yeah. Yeah. So just, and how long have you guys been doing that? Being invested in the community? Well, San events? Francisco, 23 years. Yeah. Millbury, nine years. My wife just got the Rotary Club Volunteer of the Year. Right. You know, at the elementary school my daughter went to. Yep. Now we're deeply involved in the community. And how, how can someone recreate that? That comes- Well, by August. stop showing up in August in your karate uniform with a box of donuts during teacher development day. Yeah. Go, hi, how are you doing? I know you're working hard on the lesson plans. Here's some donuts. It just- BS, you guys. One, it's played out. Two, it's not real. And they know you're only there because you want to get more students. Right. I think just genuinely care. Yeah. My wife watches the white zone. You know, I did the crossing guard one day in a one martial arts because somebody was sick. At a one martial arts hoodie, I'm out there doing crossing guard at an elementary school. Parent post later. Wow. Here's the owner of one martial arts taking time out of his busy day to keep our kids safe. Yeah. You can't buy that type of media. Right. You yes. can't. So if a, a school opens up right next to you and they copy everything, they they 
even put one martial arts, on, whatever, mm -hmm. they copy everything. They can't recreate what you've invested no. over the last 20 no. years in your community. No. The self-defense workshop tonight is not a paid event. Yeah. We donated this to a silent auction at an all girls Catholic school, high school. Yep. And so all these girls are coming over now that graduation's done and we're doing this workshop. Yeah. 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 So, so that makes a big impact because, and I think that's one of the reasons why you guys are able to show your schedule, be transparent about those things because you have your community's trust already. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, and with schools that are opening up brand new, the reason why we suggest having that exchange of information for schedule is because it encourages more conversations, right? And when you're able to converse with people and show your values and your mission statement and be able to talk to people about that, then they start to build a connection with you. If they're purely making a decision based off of your schedule, that's where things get a little bit hairy, but you guys have that connection with your community already. So you can show your schedule. Well, that... strategically, we make sure to offer beginning classes six days a week Yeah, because yeah. that's an obstacle. The obstacle is, does this fit my schedule? Right. Well, if you offer classes six days a week for beginners, something will fit. Sure. Right. Question for you. How do you structure those, those, uh, the beginner classes? Do you have one earlier in the day on Monday and then a little bit later yeah, in the day on absolutely. Tuesday? So that way there's absolutely. options. Yeah. Okay. We wouldn't just simply do five o'clock across the board. Yep. No way. We have a Saturday morning one. We have a 3.30 one on uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Yeah. So, I mean, you need that too, just like our fitness kickboxing. Yeah. We have mornings and evenings because, again, I don't know you. Right. Right. And, th I, I, you know, everything's about that relationship. So, you know, when you first start dating somebody, if they told you to show up at 3 a.m. in the middle of the park and you really like them, would you be there? Probably. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. But if you don't know them, yeah. then it's got to be convenient. It's right. got to fit the schedule. So I think that's important too. You know, I think like Gary Vee said, nobody cares what you know until they know that you care. Yeah. But I get it. You got to make rent. You're freaked out, you know, and that to me was bad business. Yeah. You should set up your business plan that you have six months of income, six months of marketing. So you're not sweating it from day one to make rent. Sure. Because that sense of fear is why you make really bad decisions in your business. Absolutely. So setting up your business structure properly and sticking to your budgets as Letitia would teach us. You know, sticking to those budgets as much as possible is powerful too. Yeah. Um, and then I think culturally just creating that safe space. Yeah. And I know that's really weird when we're kicking the crap out of each other. Safe space, what does that mean? I mean, we revamped our sparring curriculum. Yeah. People come to us very easily and they're able to express, yeah. you know, what it is that they don't like without feeling chastised. They can work with us. And we love that type of dialogue. Mm -hmm. And we do that through the app and we do that through a Google phone number. So people can always connect with us when they're in the state of emotion yeah. and not feel like I've got to wait 24 business hours. Yeah. And when we see that pop up on the Google phone or pop up on our CRM system, we're able to reply immediately. Yeah. And I think emotionally that's important. Just like when you're trying to get a hold of a friend and they don't answer you right away. Doesn't that? Yeah. It builds up anxiety and stress and stuff as you're yeah. waiting for a response. Yep. No different than when they opt in. Yeah. If you don't reply within five minutes, right? Same thing, because that's humanism. Yeah. And no amount of AI. Sure, AI can start the conversation, which we use, right? We have it all prescripted to get immediate texts, right? As soon as they opt in, Mark Amosos goes, "Hi, how you doing? We're going to send you a couple of texts." Then it says, "Here's our schedule." Then here's our trial offer. Then here's our membership, our different tuition investments. We don't use the word memberships. We don't use the word. Uh, fees we use tuition investment i like that yeah and it's a buzzword so when someone says to us you know how much for your martial arts classes we say well your tuition investment for your child's personal development and future is yeah that's good i i worked at a uh, website agency and when we do our uh, quotes or our proposals it was always investment at the bottom not mm -hmm. your fee so it is because once parents grasp that, we're no longer a season of soccer. We're no longer, can I try pottery? You know, we now become this very calculated strategic investment for a parent. And we're really proud of that. And I think that's, again, being a generational business, the reason we survive these different things because people get it. Yeah. But we're always communicating it in such a way consistently. Yeah. Consistently. And I think a big part of that is that you guys know the impact that you have on your students' lives from doing this for so long, mm -hmm. right? So you can go in very confidently and say, 
this is an investment. This is really for the future of your child, right? Because time after time, you see what that makes uh, and, and how that well, you and I know that's a huge disconnect when you're a 20 year old kid who just opened a school right. and you're singing that song. Yes. Right. I mean, one of our social media campaigns centered around black and white photos. We took all these color photos and made them black and white. Yeah. Here's this kid as a white belt at five. Here's the kid at black belt at 13. Yeah. And we shared what does Cornell, Stanford, USC and UC Berkeley have in common? All our students that earn black belts at one martial arts. Yeah. That's so awesome. that that's a great I way, <laughs> right? That's a great way to plant a seed that you should keep your kid here to black belt. Yeah, that's a lot more compelling than painting up there. We are a black belt school. Yeah, that means nothing. And then sticking them in a five year contract. Yeah, something. it means yeah. nothing. It means nothing. And and I'm glad that you see that because I, I, if I can convey that, so then a small school would say, "Well, I'm 20. What do I do? Hmm. Go out in the community. Yeah, go walk the white zone. Go earn that trust. Go build those relationships. Yeah, and be patient." <laughs> You know, the farmer mentality I talk about all the time, I think it's seven years to have a mature walnut tree. Mm. Who's mm. going to spend seven years investing into a product you get no return on? Go ahead. Yeah. You know, so we still got about 15 minutes. Marco, does anybody have questions or anything? I mean, me and Steven can do this all day. We, we, <laughs> we don't mean to ignore everybody there. Um, anybody got questions? Ha, huh, you talked me out of being... A girl, oh yeah, too. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, girl karate did, does, doesn't work. Smiles equal success. Absolutely. Absolutely. Attitude's contagious. Who's caught yours today, right? Any hard questions there, Marco? Otherwise, we'll just continue the conversation. Yeah, I, I, you know, I know you're kind of like flies on the wall taking this all in, but you're looking at somebody who's very successful in what he does, which is in our industry, but separate thereof, because he doesn't own a school. But listen, the consistency between what we're saying, you know, we both own very successful companies. We, you know, we quote Apple, we quote these companies that are very relevant, that do very well. And it's something I believe we should all draw upon. I think the limit of the 1400 square foot map that you're on to be your simple resource for data and information is what's stifling you. Or simply listening to a master that sold you a school because he's retiring after 40 years with 100 students is a bad choice. It just simply is. You know, success leaves clues. I'm not going to work with somebody financially until they show me their portfolio. Yeah. Right? I mean, why? how can you consult me on financial when you don't have any wealth yourself? Yeah. And I know it's, 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 we had this conversation before we went on air. There's a lot of that in our industry. I know that. You know, people preaching, they're going to get you seven figures and they're not even doing seven figures. First thing I do with my clients is I show them my tax returns. That's it. Yeah, that's it. You want to work with me? I better be able to back up what I say. So I think that's really important. And that's why the it's time events. People come here on a Saturday and look around going, oh, my God, what's going on here? And it is because, again, a very clear vision. You know, Stephen has a very clear vision with marker muscles and what he wants to do, and he doesn't fear. And I look at my studio, I look at Disney, I look at, and I see that. You don't sit there and hop on trends yeah. and move, but you're not afraid to try things. Of course. Remember when you did the one where, you know, what are the three things you want? They would check the boxes, yeah, yeah. then the next page would populate. Why did you take that out? Um, that was a fun experiment. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think it was too many steps for, for someone too much critical thinking too early on in the process, I guess. That, that and, I'm, I'm glad you shared it because I loved it in the beginning. Yeah. But as I started to do it myself, I'm going, there's too many steps here. Yeah. And you're, it's like asking a girl too many questions on the first date. Right. Very personal. And, and yeah, you're right. Yeah. And right. I think it, it resulted in uh, analysis paralysis a lot. And, you know, I, I always think back to, I can't remember which Gordon Ramsay show it was, but... He would open up a minute. I think it was a uh, kitchen nightmares, right? Because mm -hmm. he sits in the, the restaurant initially just to get an idea of the restaurant to try their food. And uh, there's a specific episode where he opens the menu and there's like 300 things listed. And he's like, I, I don't even know what to buy, right? Because yeah. it's like just cheesecake so much. Factory, yeah. <laughs> right? Nothing's really good. So we have to put 3,000 things on. Exactly. The and, uh, you know, you, you get that analysis paralysis where you have so much to look at that you just end up not making a decision, right? Whereas if there's only eight items or six items on the menu, it's very simple. You, you, you have limited choices, you make your decision, and that's it. So I but think, that's empowering within itself, too. Yeah, absolutely. It really is. So when yeah. I look at people's, 
you know, tuition structures, sometimes there's just way too many things there. Yeah. Because you want multiple revenue streams, multiple revenue streams. Right. You know, one of the things of they talk about in the hedgehog and good to great is it's not it's what you do well mm. and do it really well. Right. And do it right. better and better. You don't really venture too far out of your wheelhouse. Sure. Yeah. But when did you design your first website? Twelve or thirteen. Twelve people. Yeah. How many 12 year olds designed? I have a passion to make a website. What, what triggered that? How in the hell could you be playing a video game and go, Hey, I want to make websites at 12. Yeah. How in the hell does that happen? Oh God. It was uh, my love for Photoshop. That was my first uh, thing. I just love the idea of creating something from nothing, you know, yeah, and, so do I. Uh, just being able to, I mean, initially it was for video games. It was for discussion forums, having a little cool graphic underneath my name, that sort of thing. Uh, and then I just got hooked on to following tutorials and learning and enhancing my skills. And, um, and then I got approached by a friend to design a website for his parents' law firm. And that was my first project. I made a hundred dollars doing that. So are you self-taught? Yeah, totally. Yes. Yeah. Steve yeah. Jobs, self-taught. Yeah. Right. A lot of guys see, because the thing that cannot be taught is that passion because that passion is what drives you. That passion is what makes you get the right learning to fulfill your, your, your vision, right? Think that Steve Jobs didn't code, right? Right. Yet look what he's done. Elon Musk knows nothing about SpaceX, right. but his passion yeah. right, for that. And that's powerful because what you don't know, you can learn, but unless you're clear about your vision, you're clear about how you wanna make a difference and impact the world, you could spend your time being a professional student, just gather information right. and do nothing. Right. And do nothing. Wow, that's crazy. And then tell me a little bit, you know, we, we've talked about that story, how you went into your instructor school in New York. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, noticed his website just wasn't doing anything for him. I think it was a karate school, but the website, because it was hosted by some sort of templated co company, had words that talked about Taekwondo and all these things and just did a really poor job representing uh, his business. So I said, Hey, like I'm, you know, I do this for a profession, so let me do it for you. And, uh, started with that one Then I had a couple other friends that had schools as well, where I was testing out the website for them. Um, and it, it worked well. So that's when I decided, you know, I think I can turn this into something that would help a lot of school owners. And, you know, for me, it's obviously very personal as being a, a lifelong martial artist and, uh, going through all of life's trials and tribulations, but still having that consistent martial arts in my life as a kind of a, a guiding piece that that really helped me. I wanted to be uh, part of getting more people involved into martial arts and use, utilizing my skill set. That's that's the best way that I could do it, just through the websites. And and I think what's powerful, you know, what's still resonating with me is when you said that was a fun experiment. Right, especially when it comes to websites and, and technology, you have to experiment, people. Yeah. And when you get pissed off at us, you know, anybody who runs a tech company that this doesn't do this and you should be doing that, and that's gotta happen tomorrow. I think it's very ill fated mm. because you're gonna create a lot of stress for yourself. You know, the process of experimentation, there is no timeline. Right. It is what it is. Yeah. And that was a fun experiment. And when the day was done, it was too much analysis paralysis. So they got rid of it. Yep. But I think it was really it said a lot about your values when you went to version three. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's, you know, we, we get approached all the time to take on investments or to, to be acquired. And one of the big reasons why I don't want to do that is because I love the freedom that we have to do and try and make decisions. And, you know, we're not held down by specific uh, requirements or goals or, you know, things that other people that don't understand our business or what we're doing, uh, you know, would potentially put on us. So I feel like that's one of our unique uh, value propositions that we offer to our clients is that we, we have that ability to do that, uh, to, to make those quick adjustments and to try new things. Mm. And and I love that about you. I think I even brought one of those people to you at one point. <laughs> yeah, hey, somebody wants to buy you out. He said, nope. nope. <laughs> and I think that's powerful. I know we're supposed to build companies that we design to sell. Now, the only reason that discipline is there, so you have the freedom to do what you want. Yeah. But, I mean, I don't want to sell my companies ever. Right. Ever. There'll be revenue streams when I'm retired. There'll be revenue streams for my family when I'm dead and gone. Yeah. But that legacy that that lives on, you know, in many companies because of that very defined culture. Steve Jobs died. Tim Cook moved right in. Yeah. 
right? Disney died. You know, it's that's the legacy. After we're long gone, when this legacy goes past generations and generations, that's powerful. Yeah. You know, my dad's school just closed. He's 90, 90 years old. Mm. They never survived the pandemic. But to have a school for 50 plus years in one location, yeah, that's pretty powerful. Yeah, that's amazing. Right? That's pretty powerful. So what are you getting out of all of this? What are your big takeaways? Put them in the comments. Marco will post it up. We've got about 10 more minutes. Um, you know, we have balance coming up in November. I don't know what you're doing then, but you may want to come out. Yeah. You know, hang out for four days, spend yeah. the four days. Do the and, proper four days. Yeah, do the proper four <laughs> days, man. At the time, see, this is where his company's evolved a lot. <laughs> he was putting out fires. Mm. And I remember that the first time he came for the four days, we're getting ready to go on this amazing hike, yeah. you know, a silent meditation up on the bluff. And lunch was waiting up there. We were going to do a, an experience out there. And he's going, I got to go work on this right now. Yeah. Right? What a far time. Time. <laughs> Times have changed. Yeah, now. which which is growth, right? Yeah. Which is growth. But I think that's what makes... Powerful leaders, powerful. You know, Elon Musk went and slept in Twitter. When I saw that, I was just enthralled, yeah. right? And he's telling him, come sleep on the floor like me. And they're looking at this guy, you're nuts. You're, you're nuts. You're a billionaire. Yeah, you're, you're a billionaire and you're sleeping in the office. Well, because there were no beds or anything yet. Yeah. And he needed to be there right now. And, you know, I'm going through a little bit of that TJ's on paternity leave. Mm -hmm. He just had a baby. Another one of our guys had a minor tumor taken out. So it was either let a 17-year-old come in yeah. or here as we strategically, we're coming into summer, Yeah. right? So I chose to come back in so I could look at SOPs. Like last week I did day camp Yeah. for the first time in freaking, you know, a decade or so. Yeah, I mean, it's an opportunity also to show your team that you're invested. Thank you. Know? you. So, it, so it's a win-win. When those things happen, I think yeah, I, I, I'm the same way. I take it in stride, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm happy to be able to be there for the team and, and yeah add in, you know, to their confidence that if there is a tough situation that happens, that you're going to be there for them. Yeah, we did that. I mean, I came back to work during the pandemic. I was pretty much zero. Yeah. You know, and then I came back during the pandemic. We had a black belt test recently. I saw kids that I've never seen yeah. from San Francisco yeah. that have been with us seven, eight years, people. And that's not a bad thing. That's an earmark of a great company. Yeah. You know, when you're, you have this revenue being generated without you physically being present. Yep. But unless we write the SOPs, unless we have the system of training in place consistently, yeah. the brand, the culture, the core values, the brand absolutes, all of that, that will never happen. Yeah. That'll never happen. And then you have a disgruntled team that leaves and opens up and takes half the students. Right? Yeah. I mean, I know that a lot of business owners in general, they strive for freedom, right? That's that's why they get into business is to eventually be able to do what they want to do when they want to do it, right? And without SOPs, it's impossible. That will never happen, right? So that's, that's I always look at that as like the true piece that will allow you to let go a little bit is having those things in place. And uh, we're investing so heavily into that. We've, we've, we've done it now for a couple of years, but it's something that you always have to revisit and, and continue to do. But right now, specifically at Market Muscles, we are going really hard on the SOPs because there's always situations that pop up that it would be nice to, you know, ensure that we have documentation on how to handle those situations. And, you know, this past 10 days I've been in San Francisco, I by choice have looked at my computer in the morning because I want to just check in and make yeah. sure everything is good, but yeah. I didn't have to. I, 10 days I could have not not looked at anything and everything is being handled well. And it's it's really, you know, that's, that's freedom, you know? It's, well, and much like replicating my website, people say, can I have your SOPs? Yeah. I say, no, 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 <laughs> no, you cannot have my SOPs. Yeah. You know, cause that's not the way to do it because <clears throat> every SOP you create now, Mm -hmm. Isn't it rooted in your core values yeah. and your purpose yeah. and the culture? What you see, so you guys, you just have to learn to write systems. Yeah, and I'm very big on that. But you know, there's a process of writing systems based upon your core values, your purpose, and everything. But then there's a whole nother SOP on how to train the team. Right, a totally different yep. SOP. And the fastest way to write a system is from your perspective. Yeah, but that will not translate right to Joe E. Public in the company. You have to rewrite it. To yeah. fit them. Yeah. And then at this point, because of our core values are so strong, uh, you know, our leadership team is now writing processes and it's TJ writes tons yeah. of our processes. Yeah. Absolutely. I agree. Yeah. You know, that, that you never have to go it alone. You know, Gary V posted that the other day. Nobody in your company will work as hard as you. Yeah. I, I would challenge that. Yeah. 
I, I also would challenge. I that. would challenge that Gary B. Yeah. If you're listening, we would challenge that because we have people that would, you know, and I said it during the pandemic one time in a virtual event and somebody wrinkled their nose at me. I said, you know, make no mistake. We're in a war. Mm. Like, what do you mean? You know, at the beginning of the pandemic, I saw the writing on the wall. Yeah. I knew it was going to be a rough road to hoe. I said, but I'm confident because I have a team that will go to war for me. Yeah. And that's nothing that gives me bigger sense of peace to step up every time for that team because I know they'll do it for me. Yeah. And it's not a money thing. You no. know, it's, it's, it's not a money thing. It is not. It's them just being invested and sharing the same vision as you. And because nobody wakes values. up and go, how can I make market muscles a lot of money? Right. And if you put that pressure on them, you got to make a quarter. You got to do this. You got to get that. This is the amount of clients we just get every month. This is the revenue. Then it becomes people buying into what you do. Yeah. Not believing. Right, right. And that's why I don't want to promote my martial school, a martial arts school with scarcity or this time only. You got three hours to sign up for this or 1999 limited spaces. Yeah. I don't believe that's the best way to market a brand. Yeah. Totally agree. Yeah. Cool. So we're going to wrap this thing up. If you have any questions, Marco, go ahead and post it. Um, you know, you guys, if you want to find market muscles, where can they do that? Go ahead and post that there. You know, the first thing I would see is, is there a market muscles client within its five miles or population? Yeah, we do population density because five miles in Manhattan is very different. It's much than, different. Yeah, right, than right. five miles in Montana or something. Right. So. And, and that sense of integrity, you cannot replicate, you guys. Yeah. There was a company out there that said at one point, and they're gone now. It's, it's not surprising. But they said, we will not take somebody within a certain mile radius. And they took everybody. Yeah. Everybody. Everybody. Yeah. So... You know, I know integrity is not something you believe you can quantify or measure, right? As an ROI, but truly, truly it is. We have two people here that are relatively successful in their fields, and we're sharing that with you. Don't compromise your values for anything, mm. but make sure your values are not ego based. Yeah. Right? No, this is our value. No, that's your ego stepping up. So I said it this morning, I was talking to somebody about accountability. And I said, it's the ability to be accountable, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So if there's nine, if 90% of what goes wrong in my company, it's my responsibility. Yep. The other 10% that's going wrong in my company is my responsibility. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Absolutely. I'm cool with that. And yeah. I love it. See, I don't look at it as a burden. Poor me. It's lonely at the top. Right. I love it because I got people running with me because we hired them culturally. Yeah. We empowered them with good training and good SOP, constant communication and dialogue and accessibility uh, using tools like Slack and different things like that. Yep. And we've set them up for success with our market muscles, with my studio, with Letitia on the back and with strong leadership, with all those components to create that culture that people wake up to every day and they just want to be a part of. Mm. And, and that's the biggest, I know it's not glamorous and it's not, you know, how do I get 10, 10 new students, right? But it will translate to 10 mm -hmm. students and Absolutely. more and more. Yeah. So wh what's the last thing you want to leave people with? Mm. It's really the basics. You guys need to, to always consistently do the basics. It's the blogging. It's the uh, consistently posting on social media. It's the sharing success stories. It's the getting reviews. It's all those things that will always be there and uh, will always help your business grow all the other things that are out there they're cool experiment them with them if you want to but don't forget about the basics and i think that's that's really important because just like martial arts i do my basics all the time and i always try to look for something new mm. and if i after 50 plus years of doing kenpo can find something new and exciting in my white belt requirements then i know i have a growth mindset and i'm not sitting in that fixed mindset and that's what I think is extremely dangerous for any company. When you're not willing to evolve, you're not willing to remain relevant, and you think you're compromising your core values by being relevant, I think not. If anything, those core values are strengthened because it is the foundation to experiment on. It's the foundation for that relevancy. Absolutely. Absolutely. So cool. Where are we going to be? November 11th through 14th. It's Time Live Balance right here in Millbury, California, which is five minutes from SFO. It is simply an experience. I don't promote it as an event. I don't promote it as simply a small business growth event. It truly is a learning experience. So if you stay for four days, I highly recommend that, especially if you're a school owner, right? It makes a huge difference. But 
You can say for one day, two days, or four. Dave Kovar is coming in. Sam Ahn will be here. Adam Lohan, who knows? Maybe Stephen's going to come out. <laughs> He's got another reason. Well, he has a reason to be out here. Yes, I'm yes, sure. Yes. <laughs> but maybe he'll come out for another reason and, and hang out for those four days and do it right. And who are our sponsors for that event and also for the show? Pop them up there. I want to thank Tussaud, Gunny and the gang. You know, my dad was one of the first clients back in the 1990s because they're here locally. Mm. Good run family business, good people. Market Muscles, of course. My studio, Kids Love Life Skills, and LC Accounting. I want to thank Stephen for being here. I love you, my brother. Yeah, I do. Too. Love you. Love you so much. And, you know, he inspires me. And I think when, when I have the opportunity to learn from you and just be in your presence, I'm a better person for it. Likewise. Thank you, sir. This is Success Never Sleeps. I am Brandon Beliso. Until we talk again, go out there and live your best life.